What's up, Lion Pride? I come to you today with a bit of a heavy heart and, well, a lot of people think of me as a very positive person uh, and a very kind and happy person, but I think I often get misunderstood and today may be one of those times where you see a different side of me because there's an individual that I feel that I need to make a make a post about and just speak out about who calls himself a mental health advocate his name is eric and he is the owner of driven industries um and he was recently exposed for having some pretty inappropriate conversations with children and some other people have reposted content from his youtube and discord server about conversations he's had that are wildly inappropriate with people who are in some very fragile mental health situations, recovering addicts, people who are trying to get better, trying to get help. And I'm upset. I'm very angry because a lot of people don't understand the weight of ethics and responsibility and legal discipline that we have to have as counselors, as mental health professionals, not advocates, but professionals for the job that we do. Uh, and we just need to have a conversation about finding and having appropriate people in the places who speak about advice and information regarding mental health. Not just anyone gets the privilege of being on this side of the camera, this side of the therapy couch. And there's a reason for that. When you're dealing with somebody who is in a fragile state, who needs help, there is a responsibility that we have to care for them in a way that's ethically responsible and legally appropriate. And clearly this individual, Eric, has not done that. And I'll leave it up to you to research that if you're interested and see the things that are done. But we need to have this conversation because a lot of people, even, even clients who come into my office, don't understand the amount of information and time that we as therapists have spent, and not to mention those who have gone on to get a PhD in psychology or any other type of mental health field. They don't even know, they're surprised with the amount of education that I've received. In order to be just the basic level mental health counselor, I've had to go through four years of undergraduate training in psychology to get a bachelor's degree, two and a half years graduate school to get a master's in counseling. While in school, I had to do a year of practicum internship for free, not getting paid uh, in order to just graduate. And during that time being supervised by two qualified supervisors, one, a PhD professor at the school, the other one, an on-site supervisor there every day that I was there to make sure every word that came out of my mouth was scrutinized. Video recordings and audio recordings being transcribed of every word that I say to a client, then scrutinized by a PhD professor to see if I was saying the right things at the right situations and then critiquing me on everything that came out of my mouth just to graduate grad school. Then you have two years at, at the very least. That's the quickest you can do it, but minimum 2,000 hours. 2,000 hours of face-to-face -face counseling with individuals supervised weekly by a qualified supervisor. That's after you graduate. And those individuals who are in the registered internship part of <clears throat> their training uh, are not very well paid. Some do okay, but the, the pay is for having a master's degree is very small. And that's purposely done to make the field intentionally discouraging for those who are in it for the money. The whole field is set up that way because when you're dealing with individuals who need the help, they want people on this side of the therapy couch who are there to help not to make a profit. And that's what we're seeing with this individual here, not taking the time or the responsibility to care for these individuals, but instead looking out for selfish concerns and desires. So that's two years internship after grad school, just to qualify you to sit for the test in order to become a mental health counselor. Then you have to pass the test. Then you finally get the privilege of being your basic level, minimally competent, mental health counselor, able to practice on your own and individually. <clears throat> 
people don't understand this. Like I've been through nine years of training, more than nine years, in order to be here. That doesn't count my uh, extra certifications in trauma-focused hypnotherapy. That doesn't count the other courses that I've attended and continue with my education. That doesn't count the mountain of books that I study and just to help and give advice so that I know I have the body of knowledge behind my words to back up everything that I'm saying. There is a constant dialogue that happens in my head monitoring every word that comes out of my mouth because I am not only thinking about the truth that needs to be conveyed, but all the ways that that individual on the other side of the couch could be misunderstanding everything that I'm saying because I'm responsible for their misunderstandings. That's the level of diligence, of consciousness, and of just discipline that I have to have in order to minimally be able to give mental health advice. And to see somebody who clearly has not been through that type of school and has not taken it as seriously as those who are therapists have taken it, it, it frustrates me to no end. It makes me angry, it makes me very upset. And so I, I feel like a conversation needs to be had. I just want to say to those who are not aware of the level of education that somebody in the mental health field has to have, um, know who you're trusting. Know who you're getting your advice from. There's a reason that the laws are structured in such a way that it takes this level of education to be able to give any kind of advice. That's also why I can't give any mental health advice or help online. I can talk about facts, I can talk about research, I can talk about science, but I can't counsel anyone online because as soon as I begin to counsel someone, I have a responsibility over their mental health. They then become my responsibility. I have to show diligence over that individual. People don't understand that and, and clearly disregarded by Eric in what he's been doing in these type of situations. It, absolutely infuriating to me and I won't stand for it and I'm not going to be okay with it. And so I do come across a lot of stuff online of people who have been through uh, bipolar depression or been through anxiety or had panic attacks who then start to give mental health advice. And I appreciate being there and creating a community and helping one another. That's important. But be careful. Just because you've struggled with your mental health does not mean that you know the answers for everybody else. It takes a very special kind of education and a very special kind of person to go through that amount of school and have the amount of debt that I have. Uh, I had a good friend who sent me a, uh, a DM as a joke. Uh, his name is Michael. And he said, uh, you should post a picture of your student debt that you have to pay every month and say, Eric, show me your debt. <laughs> And he's got a point. I don't want to show my personal finances like that, but I, I've paid like more into this than I've gotten out. I have made less money being a therapist than I have spending trying to be a therapist. And that's because I care about what I do and it's my passion. And that's why I make these without getting paid. There's no sponsorships. There's no... There's nobody uh, who's feeding me money from making these videos. I do it because it makes the world a better place. And that's all that I ask. And that's all that I need. If I know that by talking and by researching and by doing my diligence as a human being, that I get to help somebody else and have the possibility of saving a life who's struggling with mental health and maybe make the world a better place, it's worth it. I don't want a dollar. I don't want anything. I just want to make the world a better place. And to see people who use their internet fame, their internet mental health advocate status in order to further themselves makes me want to throw up. It's despicable. And so, well, I got nothing else to say to you. I hope that everyone takes this as a word of caution and thinks about what they're doing and takes a, a moment just to say, hey, just because somebody said it on the internet, doesn't mean that it's true. There's things that I say, you know, that need to be weighed as well. Everyone has the responsibility to weigh the words that they're hearing. But because there are some letters that come after the end of my name and come after the end and before the names of my colleagues and those who have studied like I have, you can trust them a little bit more. Don't just listen to anybody who's got an opinion on the internet. Opinions are free. Help is hard to find.